What is a Bernina stitch regulator? It is going to revolutionize the way you free motion quilt. Bernina has had the Bernina stitch regulator for years and it has helped me become a better quilter. Probably the one reason you bought your Bernina 790 is so you have access to the Bernina stitch regulator. So in this video, I wanna show you how to in put it on the machine, how to use it, and just some of the basic tips. Now, I wasn't always a machine quilter, but I do have to give credit to this tool that is in this box, that it has helped me become a better free motion quilter. Look at how perfect my stitches are. Yes, I had to practice uh, the patterns and how to get things to really pop off the fabric and emphasize the blocks that I, I am working on or the quilts that I'm quilting and truly I used to only be able to stipple but now because of the stitch regulator I can really jump into any project and I actually have a brand new fresh project that I'm going to even be demonstrating on and so I'm going to share with you some of the reasons I love having the Bernina stitch regulator I don't technically need it but it makes me look good so let's get into how to attach this accessory to the machine and also to see what comes in the box. So the Bernina Stitch Regulator has worked since day one, which has actually been around a long time, actually. So if this is new to you, this is not new technology. It has been tried to be duplicated by other machines, but really this is the machine that it does it on. There's actually two other feet that come with it. A open toe foot is what I will have on the machine right now. There's a closed toe foot and a clear foot. Now this clear one can be used for some like echo quilting uh, because you can see it kind of has a saucer like disc with various lines on it. We also use that sometimes too when you're working with really high loft batting. That's a good one to uh, switch over to if you get something really poofy that you're working on. So if you have seen the blocks that go into our stitching cosmos, all those quilts I have quilted myself. If you're interested in learning what these techniques are, for the Bernina Stitching Cosmos, you can check out the links that we have below this YouTube video and watch even 10 of those videos for free. So definitely something to check out. And when you go to quilt it, here's even just like the backside of this quilt, I can truly say I have a lot of fun with my quilting when it's time to put it all together and make it come to life. The stitch regulator is foot number 42. So I'm gonna go there now and actually get it selected. Now you can arrow over seven pages worth, but if you touch the search option and type in 42, that's a quick way to jump to the foot that you're looking for. I do that often, especially when I'm trying to type in the quarter inch foot number 97. So instead of scrolling all the way to page, 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 touch in at the top, type in 97 and you're right there. So now the machine does know that that will be the foot I'm working with. You do see that on screen. You do see a stitch length, but as soon as I plug this in, the new screen you'll see will actually allow me to adjust the stitch length that I want my stitches to all be. Yes, even though I'm free motion quilting, that's what a stitch regulator is all about. It's gonna regulate how fast well, it can recognize how fast you're stitching and keep the needle going up and down to keep the stitch length you have selected. So you do a lot of little stitches and you could do lots of wider stitches. You also will be able to do a zigzag as well. But there's a couple tips along the way. So first off, we are going to lower the feed dock. So over on the side of the machine where your foot control plugs in, make sure you push that all the way in so it stays indented. And I can see that that's true because my my feed dog area here has turned yellow. Let's go ahead and take off the foot. Oh, before I do that, let me show you how these feet actually change out and then we'll get to loading it. I like to do this before I put the foot on the machine. Trust me, it's a little easier to do it uh, off the machine. See, there's two little white buttons on the side. Squeeze them on both sides and just slide the foot off. And then to put it back on, you're just gonna slide it and it clicks in. So if you're switching feet out to one of those other options, that is how easy it is. So next, I put the foot on the machine and then I will plug it in. 
That is, again, an easy order. And you're gonna be coming around the backside. Easy is just to go ahead and stand up and find where it plugs in right back here. You saw the screen switch over as soon as it recognized that that unit has been attached. The default stitch length is two millimeters. And just like anything, you're going to need to kind of practice uh, on some fabric, sandwich a little fabric, batting together, and try it out. Something else I'll be using is some quilting gloves. That's just easier for me when I'm moving the fabric around. But the stitch length will be able to be adjusted for longer stitches or shorter stitches. And then I mentioned a zig zigzag option. It's almost like thread painting when you're looking at how that's going to stitch out, but we'll focus on the straight stitch. The other thing I'd like you to do is in put on the straight stitch throat plate. Tell the machine you're doing that, then it will make sure you don't accidentally pick a zigzag and break the needle. But a straight stitch throat plate will assist in prettier stitches, especially when you start to go over some thicker areas. Before we get nice and close to the needle to see how to this works, I wanna show you one more thing that I'm gonna be switching between. There's a mode one and a mode two. And depending on if you'll be using the start stop button on the front of your machine here, or your foot control, you'll need to select which mode of the machine running you prefer. So I'm gonna show you first on mode two. That's the one with the start stop button here. I will not be using my foot control at all, and everything will be controlled by my fingers above the quilt. Then we'll switch over to mode one. Now you do kind of notice that when it is selected, it's a little darker gray than if it is not. So now I can see I'm selected on mode two. This is the one I have my students start off with, or if somebody's never used the stitch regulator, this one is the one to start off with. I always like to do a little practice testing where my batting and the back are connected, and I can look for where the tensions are and if I need to adjust them before I start on my actual quilt. So in mode two, the one you're gonna use the start stop button on, you're gonna notice that when you touch it, nothing happens, but you need to touch and hold it until that needle takes a stitch and that red light comes on below the foot. Once you start moving it, that's when the stitches are gonna be regulated. So at first, sometimes people say that it's kind of like jerky, and that's not really the fact. It's, it, the fact is, is that it's trying to keep up with the, with the movement of your hands. So if you kind of do little jerky pushes, that's why it kind of wants to go faster and slower. So that's just part of getting things going. Now I am gonna go ahead, you saw that I actually touched the button here to turn off the red light. Keep in mind that if the red light is on, it is going to stitch. So I'm gonna peek on the back side, and I do feel like the stitches are a little bit of a straight line here. So I am going to increase the top tension. So to kind of help even out the stitches a little bit, kind of pulling them up to the front side. Now, there is lots of techniques to learn, and I do recommend that you take some online courses that will help you with the free motion quilting. What I wanna do here is just make sure you get comfortable with how the stitch regulator works. Like there is the point about taking a stitch and bringing your bobbin thread up, which I do usually when I'm quilting. Um, but if you do use the thread cutter here, you will find that things happen. Um, they cut that thread really close on the underneath side. It's actually quite easy. So I'm still just testing to make sure that my stitches are the nice balanced stitch. Oh, did you see that red light blink? So if you see the red light blink here, it is telling me that I went faster than the stitch, the machine could stitch at the stitch length selected. So what it's gonna do is train me not to go too fast, to stay within that. Now, if you do get a lot of red lights, you will find that if you just lengthen your stitch just a little bit, it will let you go further before you get that red light a warning as you come. So, but my little thing is I love thinner thread. I've got an isocord embroidery thread in here. Don't let the word embroidery fool you. That is just a nice thin polyester shiny thread. I can get it in so many colors. I can get actually the color I'm looking for. Uh, but it is, I like because it hides my stitches. And if I'm not perfect, it is going to 
hide them. Also, I like a little shorter stitch length, so when I do nice tight patterns, that it actually uh, it smooths out the edges as I'm going around, say, circles and things. So I do have this quilt pin basted, and I am going to kind of just work my way into that area. But before I do that, I want to also show you what mode one is about. So you kind of saw me pushing the green button to start it, the green button to stop, and, and again and again. If that's not your cup of tea, switch over to mode one. Remember on screen between the one and two. Now when I step on my foot control, watch what happens. That needle goes up and down and the red light turns on. As soon as I take my foot off the foot control, the red light of the stitch regulator goes off. But look, my hands are still on my fabric. So at any given time, I can quickly start and stop and not have it, um, not have to move my hands from the fabric. love how easy it is just to be able to focus on where I'm going and not so much the stitches that I'm taking. I'm letting the machine kind of do the regulating of the stitches and after practicing with different patterns, a little bit practice of like how to start and stop, meaning once I've stopped, take a few stitches and then let your hands move the fabric. Of course, I have to kind of watch where those safety pins are. That's always something you need to be careful of. But look how perfect those stitches are. Every single time that you sit down to stitch, this allows you just to plan on your patterns, enjoy filling in each area, and even doing an all over design like what I am doing on this particular quilt.